Hey everyone, welcome to this Travify Academy session with our speaker and presenter, Angela Hughes, who we are super excited to jump in and talk about the luxury market, which we were just talking about is such a hot topic. And so like we just said, we, this webinar could be hours long, it could be multiple webinar sections, but um, so we're really excited to chat about that um, here today. But I do want to quickly say too, if you've been joining us for these sales workshop, these sessions, we have unfortunately came to the end. I can't believe it. It is crazy. The two days went by very quickly. If you've been joining us, thank you so much for joining us through these. Um, I hope that you've learned a lot of stuff and had as much fun as we have uh, during this as well. But if this is your first session joining us, um, just to quickly introduce myself, I'm Stephanie Grice, and I am the Senior Client Champion Education Coordinator here at Travify. Um, so really good to have you all here. Um, now, before I introduce Angela, though, I do have a couple things to go over. First, again, if this is your first webinar with Travify Academy, just want to quickly tell you what to expect with it. Um, so really what Travify Academy is, is a free educational resource to further Travify's mission to power the success of travel professionals. And our team has the privilege to work with thousands of amazing travel advisors like Angela um, and organizations daily and have partnered with many of these industry experts and thought leaders to bring you powerful content and educational webinars and sessions to help Help you grow your business. So it's important to note that these webinars are not commercial in nature to specifically promote any of the industry speakers, including Travify, in which Travify Academy does not focus on Travify's products. So that's telling you a little bit about Travify Academy. And if you ever want to check out other um, content that we've created or webinars, um, go to academy.travify.com and you can always explore those there. But um, the last couple of things I want to mention here too, and then we'll dive in, um, is that this is the last session of the sales workshop, which is kind of sad, but it has been really fun and we hope to keep doing this. Um, you know, maybe this will become a new annual tradition, um, but all of these have been recorded. This one's being recorded. You will automatically receive a link to a recording after this to view this. So if you need to leave during the session, um, don't worry, you'll get to watch it again afterwards. And then we'll have all those other sessions available online for you to watch too. Um, and I'm actually going to send out an email probably tomorrow um, with a recap of everything. So don't worry, we've got your back if you're missing anything or need to see anything. Um, the other thing that I want to note is that if we do have time at the end for a Q&A with Angela, um, go ahead and put any questions you have during the presentation in that questions, um, I think it's a questions box in the GoToWebinar panel, and um, we can go ahead and ask those at the end. But now, all of that being said, I am so excited um, to introduce our speaker here today. Um, for Angela Hughes, coaching and creating marketing strategies for travel professionals and travel companies has always been her passion. For over 35 years, she has been actively selling and operating Trips and Ships Luxury Travel, which is a full service travel agency. And as a certified travel consultant since 1993, Angela has made it her mission to create premium bespoke experiences through her luxury consultation uh, business, all while privately consulting agencies to build their luxury travel market space through her luxury travel university. So she is considered a true professional among her tra her industry colleagues. She's also been featured in Luxury Travel Advisor magazine, and she often uh, guest speaks around the country and on social media. And we were able to nab her for another speaking opportunity here today. And Hughes lectures as an adjunct professor at BYU in geography and travel and tourism. Um, but one thing I, I really want to note here too, and I think this is really cool, Angela also gives back through travel via um, their nonprofit, Color My World, creating humanitarian trips, meeting sustainable development goals around the world. So really cool, really well-rounded. We are so excited to have you here, Angela. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So um, let me flip over here. I'm really excited to be here, you guys. And I appreciate um, Stephanie and the Travify team for inviting me um, into the workshop. And I'm a huge Travify fan. And I know they're not promoting Travify, but we were just chit chatting before that if you're going to be like selling in the luxury market space at all, you really need Travify as a product. So I'll give them a shout out, even though they're not giving oh, themselves. Thanks a shout out but um i was just telling her how it's really just upped our game i didn't discover it until probably january and um 
we were able to sell quite a bit during COVID um, just by being able to link our Travify account and text that to different people. And so definitely check out the product. I know that you're here for the workshop, but giving you guys a plug on that because it's really been a game changer for me. And when one of my agents discovered it, I was just like going crazy, like we need this. this is all my dreams come true. So I wanna to talk to you guys just like we're talking one-on-one -on -one with each other. Um, we've got so many slides to go through, so ask your questions. I hope we can get through everything. But when you are selling luxury travel, it's so much different than selling to the mass market. And I want you right away to think about just positioning yourself because you are your own brand. And I talk about this all day long on social media. Don't sell yourself under your travel agency brand. You need to create you. You need to create being unique. Um, you need to show people why you're unique and why that counts. And this is what I am. And so I want you to consider creating your identity and your branding for yourself. Um, I see so many agents concentrating on developing the branding of their agency, which is great. And then they're like, oh, I don't know if I want to put myself out there on social media, or I don't know if I want to put myself out there in public, et cetera. But I really feel like that's the next step because when you are selling luxury travel, people need to know who you are as a person inside and out. And I'm really, really um, not only authentic and genuine on social media, but I'm a huge storyteller on there as well. And I think that's really important. And we'll talk a little bit about that down the road but just be more transparent with people so they know who you are as actually an agent. Um, luxury is really superlative and, and not very comparative. And so that's something I want you to keep in your mind. And then obviously because I'm an academic as well and have a master's in geography and lecture on the college level, I'm always like, know your geography. And so that's just one of the basic tips right out of the shoot. Um, if you're gonna sell luxury travel, you need to know the remote destinations, you need to know um, the seven continents, you know, you need to know the rivers, the landscapes, the mountains, everything, because you're building unique bespoke experiences. Okay, first of all, what is your sales strategy? Do you have one? I think it's super, super important and that you get just crystal clear on solving a solution to the problems of your clients. So often people like race into the emails and they want to get going on um, just getting the quote out and fast response that the agent doesn't help the client understand how you're solving whatever problem that they have. And so don't ignore what you are really selling and what you're really selling is a solution. You're not really selling a product. Okay. People are coming to you because they want to solve some type of problem. The other thing that I'm seeing a lot during COVID right now is and I, and I saw this before, so two different things. Um, first of all, people usually sell out of their pocket. I'll hear agents say, including my own agents, because we're a host agency, and um, I'll hear my own agents go, oh, um, they can't afford that, or they're this, or they're that. And I'm always like, don't sell out of your own pocket when you sell travel. Don't assume what the client can, can buy, because when you're selling luxury travel, you're actually selling a value and when people see value, they might stretch into other pockets that you didn't even know even existed because that might be their dream destination. And so don't sell out of your own pocket of like, well, maybe they can afford that. Maybe they can't afford that. And then also I would really advise you guys don't sell out of the COVID pocket. Um, I know there's agents out there that are like, I'm not going to be selling for two years until COVID's over. Okay, great you're pretty much in this camp over here and that's fine don't sell um more power to you but you cannot sell i you have a responsibility to sell travel and let the consumer know exactly the pros and the cons of traveling during covid because this is not going away and people are going to begin traveling again and they are traveling again i just returned from africa last week people around the world are moving and so don't sell based on COVID. Just make sure your clients know the ins and outs and let them make the decision. And so those are two things I really want you to focus on is sell strategies. Um, number one thing always in selling luxury or selling anything in travel is solving a problem for the customer. And then two, don't make any assumptions one way or the other with COVID or with, with finances. 
Um, I think it's really important um, to sell quality with quality. Um, first of all, I love this picture that's on the screen. I have to tell you, I shot that from a moving car in India a couple of summers ago. And I almost use that in all my presentations because I just love the color on that. But um, let's talk about selling quality with quality for a minute. I think branding is super key. And you hear a lot of, I mean, there's lots of great travel coaches out there. Sandra, I don't know, Macklemore, you know, there, there's uh, great travel coaches out there that are helping people brand and, and do amazing things with, with their sites and their social media. Um, one of the things that I see is like, I'll go on and like we offer um, in my coaching sessions, like a one hour, like branding powwow, where we just go through everything that you have and we're really mean about it. We're like, this works, this doesn't work, this works, doesn't work. I, I think branding so key because across the board, I, I, I see so many, um, let me just move this really quick because I can't see my slides. Um, I see so many holes in the branding. Um, one, one thing is like, people tell me that they want to sell luxury travel, but then I'll go out to their website and they'll have an NCL cruise right on the front page with, you know, four free offers, or they'll have a fun jet trip to Mexico to the Ryu. Um, so the branding needs to match up with the product line. If you're going to like sell luxury travel, you need to make sure across the board, everything that you put out there screams luxury. And I think websites matter. I want everybody to just jot this down and just look at it and go, okay, um, what, what is my website saying about me? Is it addressing and sending a message that I'm all luxury travel? And you can self-diagnose yourself. You don't even need to do an hour session with me. You can look and see whether or not you're fitting the product line that you wanna sell. Um, I think the email address matters so much. We've talked about this a lot over the last couple of years. This is nothing new to this era, but um, if your email address, if your domain on your email address is just gmail.com or Comcast or something, you do not look professional and you need to up your game there. And I think your signature matters. Um, I have a really savvy signature that can link you out to my webpage and can link you out to our reviews and tells you what our products are coming up. And um, I, I feel like concentrate on that. So it's just not Jane Smith, ABC Travel, 603 in your phone number. Look at your signature. Everything needs to be packaged so you're looking like a pro, not that you just started yesterday and that you didn't want to invest in a domain name. Okay. Also on social media, are you walking the walk, talking the talk? This is where I see so many holes, um, so many loopholes for people. Um, first of all, posting consistently every single day. Okay, and you might think that's overkill. But what are you posting about? Are you telling stories? You need to become a storyteller. So people, if, if you're just posting a photo and you're like, hey, give us a call, we can help you with this trip. and you know, we're pros in this. That's not enough. Get authentic with people in your social media posting and walk the walk with that. If you're using a Facebook page, I say this all the time, very archaic. I want everybody to move into like a Facebook group. Groups have a lot more um, firepower on Facebook and you can get a lot more traction with the algorithm with, with a Facebook group. And so maybe think about moving to that. Um, and I know I'm going at like a rapid speed, but there's so much I want to get through. And um, you can jump on over to my group, Luxury Travel, Social Media and Marketing, where I'm discussing these topics all of the time, if you feel like we're cruising through some of this. Um, I want you to really create a reason to buy for people. People who buy luxury travel will pay top dollar for the products that we sell. If we're solving, again, the issue that they have in their life, okay? And so we're, we're creating reasons for people to buy. We're creating excitement. Um, the other thing that you need to do to position yourself well to sell luxury travel is become authoritative. And authoritative um, means that on social media and when you're talking with people that you're actually sounding like an authority. Um, I'm often a contributor on Fox 35 here in Orlando uh, because they feel like I'm an expert on things. And you can do that same thing in your own social media feeds, in your own news outlets. Start getting authoritative, whether you're doing it through Facebook Lives, which is a very common program for me, or through your posting, or through your Instagram channel. But it, it needs to be more than top level um, 
funnel where you're just posting images and hoping to get some traction with that. Um, also, when you are on Facebook, when you're in these different communities looking for people, it's really super important that you're engaging. Just don't go partake, partake of material. Um, we're going to look at different ways to attract your ideal audience, but one of the things that you need to be doing is engaging with the other side of, of your social media because that's helping you brand yourself. If you're not truly interested in people, they're probably not going to be truly interested in you. So. Okay, um, let's move on for a minute if I can get my computer to move on, which it won't move on. Okay, I'm frozen, so bear with me one minute. Oh, Steph, I'm totally I'm, frozen. Yeah, I'm, I'm here too, if you can hear me. Um, your video's still moving, and I see your mouse moving. You do, because I'm not Yeah, moving. so I think if you maybe need to click on the screen, so like maybe move your mouse into the screen and then click it. Oh, wait, let's see. Okay. Did I move? Okay. Oh, wait, oh. now I don't see it. Let me, um, you don't let see me, uh, -uh. so let me, or I see you, but I don't see the screen anymore. So let me, um, make me or make, make you the presenter again really quick here. Okay. Maybe I lost that. Okay. Let's see. Oh yeah. Go to webinars. So fun sometimes. <laughs> I know. All of a sudden it just froze up on me there. Okay. There we go. Should be coming over. Okay, I don't have any, um, okay, show my screen, let's get back here, people. Are we there good? We go. Yeah, I don't know why we yep. froze up. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about who your target needs to be. And so, um, so many times in marketing, you'll hear people say like, who's your ideal client avatar? And people will literally always say to me like, I wanna sell more luxury travel. That's my new niche, that's my new target market. And I'm like, oh great. So one thing that they're doing is they're spending a lot of time in box number one up here. They know that they want people with more income and maybe in their 50s and 60s, but they're not really focused on, focused on like box two, three, and four in this chart, okay? Um, how, how do you connect with your clients? So when you're when you're building the ideal client avatar, I want you to focus on one person in your mind. So you're like, Sally is a woman who's 65, who has X amount of dollars, who lives in this neighborhood. You're gonna like create, your client avatar should be a created person in your mind. And then I want you to take it even a step further. I want you to think about what their needs are, what their tastes are, what their preferences are, what their life habits are and then think about what their objections, their concerns, and their challenges are. Most people will only look at the demographics and, and then move on. They're not looking about how we can connect with them. Almost every time I give a speech or a talk in, on luxury travel, people will say, how do I find the people? And we're gonna talk about that. And that's part of your, your business development here is how can you target and connect with those people, okay? And then how can you transfer this knowledge over to them? Um, how, first of all, I want to say that the luxury travel market used to just be that baby boomer market that had a lot of money, but now, um, looking at the statistics, they said that I think 19 to $24 million is spent in the millennial market. And so that's gigantic, um, for the affluent emerging millennials. And so that might be an area that you want to start like adjusting to because, and, and that's a little bit tricky because then you're thinking, well, they're using Airbnbs and they're doing their own travel and so forth. But there is a huge affluent emerging millennial market that's coming to be in the luxury travel boom. So, okay. So who are the wealthy? It used to be that you'd look at like their cars, their handbags, um, where they hung out at the country club. But now really you can look at rising incomes, flattening prices. People have more easily available credit to spend. And they really actually have more access to high-end goods. And as you know, and I just gave a speech on this the other day on a college circuit, uh, how Instagram's really reshaped like the whole travel market because people now go to Instagram and they're saying like, oh my gosh, I wanna be in the Maldives and I'm 26 year old, 26 years old. And that used to only be a, a trip that you took if you were older and could do overwater bungalows and ha had the money. And, and now the Maldives is a very common honeymoon package for the little wealthier um, millennial honeymooners. Okay, I don't know how we flipped to my last slide there. Um, patience is a big key with this. Um, where do we find the people, okay? 
first of all, you have to hang out in their hangouts. And I know that you're all thinking like, well, how can I hang out in their hangouts when I'm quarantined and we could be pretty much really lonely for the next year? I get that. That means you got to go more digital on things and you need to get in those groups. I look for entrepreneurial groups. I look for marketing groups. I look for mom's groups. I look for anything that I can identify with. And then I get in there engaged. I never go into those groups with the perception of, of like, I'm going to be selling in there because first of all, advertising in most groups don't work, but get in there, engage. And you'll, you'll discover that travel is a huge topic that people always love to talk about. And you'll always be able to slip in little, little things about travel and who you are and what you do. I always think it's really interesting to watch the luxury realtor. They always know all of the moves. And so I read a lot of things like, how does a luxury realtor in Florida sell a house? Um, because we've got places like in Windermere, um, where I live in Orlando, um, the community of Islesworth, where the houses are four or five, six million dollars. Now that's not my neighborhood, but that was Shaq's neighborhood. And that was Tiger Woods neighborhood. And a couple of my clients live there. And that's just a small enclave um, right outside of Disney. And so what's going on in those hangouts and how do I get um, connected with that? I actually called a couple of realtors that I knew that sold in that area. And I was like, what are your strategies? What are you doing there to pick up people? Um, also consider not uh, pulling and not pushing. A lot of luxury travel clients don't wanna be pushed along, okay? And, and so you're, you're gonna bring them to you. And you're going to define this consistent original marketing strategy. And we're going to talk about that. And also, I just want to stress that you need a business development plan. And if you don't have one, reach out to me and I'll give you a gigantic packet for you to start filling out to help you build that business development plan. It's not enough to just say, I sell travel, I have a website and um, I'm going to target, you know, everybody in the river cruise business now because that's my niche. That's not going to be enough to sustain you after COVID. You're going to need a business development plan that includes marketing strategies and how you're going to get there. And you're going to need to make it like super, super crystal clear. Okay. And for those who have been doing it, because I've met with a lot of agents over COVID, I'm already seeing the progress that they've made. Um, I, I'm working with somebody in Greece who I hope is on the call, Diane, and she's amazing. And I'm watching her like develop her Greece business over there. And I'm like so excited for her to showcase that in our group coming up um, because she's building a dynamic product during this um, pandemic. Okay, some key strategies right now during COVID to target high net worth individuals. And, and let's talk about this for a minute because there's the mass market, and the mass market's going to be your Royal Caribbean, your NCL, your Funjet, your all inclusives, a lot of that, you know, three to six thousand dollar range that we sell a lot of. And guess what? I don't care who you're talking to. Every luxury travel agent still sells mass market. If, if they're not, they're lying to you because it's true. I'm not going to turn around, turn away business, and either is my agency if they want a mass market product. But the key is that you want to be able to sell as much luxury travel as you can, because then you can make commissions with a comma in them. And that's super important because if you can sell a trip to Tanzania, which we're hot on right now, since I just got back last week, we've got 30 people in the hopper looking for quotes on that. Um, I can make a lot more selling Africa than I can, you know, doing Royal Caribbean all day long for the rest of my life. And so Part of that is like shifting a little bit, but there's the mass market, there's the premium market and the premium market's going to be more of your upscale products. It's going to be um, Osmara, your celebrity, um, Seaborn, um, your Grand Velas, so forth. And so you're moving into premium where people are feeling like, okay, if I'm paying more, um, there's more value with it and because it costs more it takes me out of that kind of mass touristy touristy fill and a lot of people sit in that premium market and most of you are probably in the premium market and you don't even know it um, I think that you're doing better than you probably think that you are and then luxury just takes us up even a step higher it's our high-end products our yachting our private charters um, our private jets our our luxury destinations um, that are a little more exotic, 
the the Antarctica's, the the Tanzanias, the Galapagoses, and and so forth. So, um, again, during this time frame, I think it's super important. Like you have key strategies. One of them is, and here's something I I find all of the time that agents do not know how to use any type of SEO, search engine optimization. That's a whole new field for them. And I'm actually going to be teaching a private class on that. Um, that you can sign up for on search engine optimization and also on keywords. I mean, I see agents putting up blogs, but they don't keyword them. They don't search for the things. And so people are never really finding their blogs because um, you don't know what uh, what people are looking for in the keywords. Um, no luxury client ever goes out and says, I want a really expensive luxury trip. Okay. And I heard that just from some people who traveled to Africa with us last week. She said, I would never search luxury African safari. I would just put in African safari and then let it figure itself out. And so you've got to like learn to figure out what people are searching for online so you can cater your content to their experience, okay? Make sure your website, like I said at the beginning, is visible when potential clients see it and it represents luxury. Every photo on there, pay for the Shutterstock, don't use your own, you know, 10 photos you took in the Maldives unless they're drop dead gorgeous. You know, make sure that the visual experience draws people to your site. And by all means, like pay to have a professional site done. Um, one of the things that I always think about when people want to sell travel is they feel like they have to do every single thing themselves, like their own accounting, their own websites, their own content, their own SEO. Um, I'm a big proponent of like teams and hiring out and outsourcing things, outsourcing my bookkeeping, outsourcing uh, my website and different, and different things. I, I can build websites myself, but I outsource lots of different pieces for it. Like my luxury travel university.com is one that I just built and it's not even loaded because I'm working on right now um, outsourcing that. It's really important when you're an entrepreneur to outsource because that gives you the time to focus on the things that you are super good at, okay? Regular agents, when they're trying to do everything, carry the whole bag, do every single thing in that, they're missing opportunities because they, they're like, well, I can't afford to do that. Guess what? Yes, you can, because the minute you sell one river cruise, you've just made all of that money back. Focus your time and your attention and your energies on building the user experience and, build a, and get a team to help you with that because you're gonna move quicker. And the game is not so much to move quicker, but it's going to position yourself better so you're ready to sell. If you're spending four hours developing strategies and and never like selling, then you've got issues. Um, you know, you're just being sucked of resources. So one of the things I think is super uber important, um, and this was probably prior to COVID, but target those postcodes in those towns which have a high density of high net worth individuals. Um, that are, and if you want to sell the Uber luxury, then you need to be targeting people that are over $5 million because actually a client that makes a million or tends to be in the millionaire department is still probably buying in the premium market. If you want to jump into those higher end experiences, um, then focus on property values over 5 million and start targeting in on those types of people and then creating a digital strategy that'll help you use those demographics to target them through either Facebook ads. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, I've run Facebook ads and they don't work for me. But again, you probably need to look at some funnels and different sell strategies in, in that digital strategy to help you like narrow in on those demographics. Um, where are your clients hanging out at? Okay, LinkedIn is probably the most unused bit of real estate in social media. I see everybody on Facebook. I'm on there all of the time as well. But really, LinkedIn is where you have your higher net worth individuals. And you can actually search that for jobs and roles and industries and different sectors and connect with a lot of people. I would advise you every single day to probably spend one hour not posting COVID or Trump versus Biden or um, whatever on Facebook, but actually focusing in on connecting with individuals that you could potentially sell with and that you could build authority with through the content that you're posting, especially on LinkedIn. I, I feel like Instagram is a real 25 to 45. And so it, it, in the age bracket there, so if you're not 
I, I feel like that's the wrong platform, but you need to use it because the stories are super powerful on there. Um, and in Facebook, obviously, there's plenty of the Baby Boomer 50 plus group on there. And that's a really great place to continue to sell on that. What's really interesting is 99% of high net worth individuals spend more than 90 minutes per day on social media um, and are viewing it from their phone. And so you'd be surprised how much time that they actually have. And I would think that they wouldn't have that much time because I think they'd be working more to maintain um, their net worth, but uh, they're actually spending a lot of time on there. So um, use LinkedIn, write a blog post. It has a lot of power on there because the algorithms have not dumbed it down like Facebook has. Facebook doesn't have a lot of power uh, because of the algorithms right now. And that's why I say go to a Facebook group, continue your Facebook page, but grow your group. Um, but grow your own personal profile to be a mix of your real life and your selling life as well. I mix in both. I know some people are against that. I'm really for that because when people get to know you as a person and then they can trust you and they love you and they know your kids and everything, then they feel comfortable buying a product from you. Okay. Um, always big pieces. Um, first of all, look at that photo. That was in Zanzibar. Um, I was there last week. So um, follow up. Always leverage your referrals. I ask people all the time, are you using referrals? Are you asking for them? Um, and don't always ask for them right from your client base. I would consider asking your accountant, hey, I'm happy to refer some people to you if you don't mind giving me some referrals. Your lawyer, your circle of friends, whether they buy from you or not. And this is a perfect opportunity to be like, hey, my business took a big hit this year. Could you guys help me out with some referrals? And then always, again, follow up with just those existing clients and ask them and, and start building that. It's better to have 10 or 15 really super amazing clients than 2,000 clients that are buying Apple products. You will just feel so much better about your life when you start moving up the food chain. Okay, um, where can you meet that ideal buyer? <clears throat> Luxury clients can be anywhere. If you don't know what to look for, just start looking around. And I didn't even finish the sentence on there, but th this will give you an example. Last week, I had flown home from Africa, from Tanzania to JFK. Um, I couldn't get a flight back down to Orlando. So I flew up to Boston to see my husband and we were at Legal Seafoods having lunch on the wharf there. And all of a sudden, like the table behind us, and you know, we're kind of socially distanced there outside. Um, the table behind us, the lady was like, oh my goodness, like an African safari would just be my dream. And I see my husband, he like grabs my hand and he's like, don't do it. <laughs> like he knew I was just going to be like, um, almost like jumping the table to like make that connection with them, you know? And he's like, don't do it. Let them eat lunch. Um, but I'll tell you on the safari, I met several people who were traveling alone. One had told me at, at the lodge, cause we almost had the lodges exclusively to ourselves. Um, but there was one person there having dinner. I said, Oh my gosh, are you traveling alone? He goes, Oh, it's been so hard. He goes, I tried to like connect the lodges together and get safaris at different places. And I was like, oh, next time you should join us. And he gave us my, you know, his card. And, and that happened two or three times on the trip where I ran into people and I saw that they could be potential would be clients. And I just listened to them and had a nice chat with just a stranger, which is so odd um, because I don't go to bars. I'm not very social. I'm social, but I'm very introverted at my own home as well. Um, so start with your inner circle, but look at your wider sphere of influence to help you build your business. Um, some people do the Rotary Clubs and the BNI meetings, and um, they're putting up tables at different things. You're gonna have to get way more creative with the way that you do things now, because we might not have those experiences for a couple of years. And then I think it's really important just to be like simple, and uh, simply human, just kind, nice, and, and smile. I mean, kindness pays off. You know, if you're a good person, it pays off. It comes full circle. And I wanted to just really challenge you guys to be really careful about what you post on social media. Um, we've talked a lot about this in my group and with other agents, like, wow, you're exposing yourself so much with so many personal views on there that that can be really damaging to somebody who would potentially buy from you, whether it's political, religious, um, or even salesy. I mean, you really just need to be careful of the type. I mean, you're developing a profile of, of yourself on there. and 
and somebody's going to determine whether or not they want to do business with you. So like I say to my kids, be careful what you post. Okay. Um, we talked about this just a minute ago about creating your own support team. Um, there is a difference between an advisor and an entrepreneur. I want you guys to grow into becoming a luxury travel entrepreneur and outsource and free up your time where you can. And don't let money stop you on that because I promise you that you'll make more money when you're outsourcing because you're freeing up your time to use all of that creative energy to do so. Um, in fact, I was just, I, I've told this to many people that like, I feel like COVID has been a huge blessing. I've always made over six digits in travel. And this year, obviously like you, I lost, you know, all of my income um, and cried probably till June and had a lot of anxiety and even gained 10 pounds and now have lost 12 and um, ate a lot of chocolate chip cookies and all of that. Um, but I woke up in July and I was like, no more. And, and all of a sudden I just shifted my mindset because selling luxury travel is a mindset. Selling as an entrepreneur is a mindset. And I woke up and I was like, I'm done. I'm done grieving. I'm done losing. And now I'm going to use this creative space to become super duper amazing. And it's become a huge blessing for me, a huge blessing to connect with so many of you who I wouldn't normally have that opportunity to do. Um, it's given me more creative flow to come up with programs and designs and, and different things that I've always wanted to implement, more time to clean up my messes, to rebrand, restructure, rebuild, recreate, re-everything. And um, I think it's really important that you work on your inside. And I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. We might be focusing on all of these different strategies and and developments, but really the important thing is you work on your inside and you grow your inside uh, to become a strong person. And then you'll find that you attract what's inside you. And when I talk to a lot of advisors, I find that they, they often are lacking on the inside and it reflects in the types of things they're selling um, because they're just not attracting that, whether it's a confidence issue or they don't feel like getting out there um, for one reason or another, or they're going through issues. But once you clean up what's inside here, you'll find that everything is more dynamic in your life. Okay, so luxury means custom. Um, like I said, a lot of us are in the luxury market more than they think. They're buying you. Um, I'm going to kind of skip this, just we're short on time. So um, we talked about a few of these things. Um, you don't need to position yourself. Position yourself as a luxury seller, but here, here's what I always do. I always try to create demand, and this is a really key thing. I have all of my clients laser focused and targeted, and I put them in a group, mass market, luxury, premium, and then I'll always sell down. So I'll give people the highest option, and then I'll be like, hey, we can chop it down. We can chop it down to fit in your budget. But you want to get them demanding, feeling like, whoa, I really want to do that because I want Giraffe Manor in Kenya because that experience looks awesome. So I'm going to save up for a year at $1,500 a night. Um, but in, in doing that, in, in increasing that demand with like maybe my mass market clients and my premium clients, it gives them something to like wish for. So even though I know they can't afford it, I don't hesitate to send out amazing um, things that might create an experience for them emotionally that they might start thinking about, okay? So when I say communicate with a second market to whom the product is attainable, there's a strategy with that because you'll often see people jump up to the next level. So if you're selling a lot of mass market, try to move them up to the premium market. I mean, it's gonna be hard if you're selling mass market to all of a sudden jump to like yachts, okay? You're gonna have to move people up casually and that's okay and there's no shame in being the mass market because it doesn't always fit everybody's personalities and it doesn't always fit who you socialize and in um, the demographics of who you are as a person and there's nothing wrong with that and there's nothing to be shamed by that mass market is a big piece of the industry so here's your homework um, i want you to like study higher end agents um, look at who's out there selling i do a lot of studying on different host agencies on different consortias on different high-end agencies to see what uh, agents to see what their strategies are and i can see that a lot just by following them and connecting with them again become the expert in in your field of whatever you're loving um i'd loved to see the personalities of agents come out that um you know we're doing cooking shows because they love wine and everything you know and they created their brand around food or whatever 
So um, know the community that you are going to sell to. I think it's really random to just all of a sudden be, I'm going to start selling luxury travel. I'm going to start selling river cruises, but you haven't river cruised and you've never been to Europe. Um, you, you need to act the part and also dress the part a little bit, especially when we move out into um, socializing with, with real people again. <laughs> real people that sounds odd when we're real again so um and then market appropriately network appropriately so get out your homework and like write these things down like how am i marketing how am i networking with people and then do i have the right mindset um i think that is super just important is shifting your mindset to be what you want it to be everything starts with inside um, let me just go back. Here's where you can find me. And then we'll we'll move to questions. I'm all over the place. Join my Facebook group, Luxury Travel Social Media and Marketing for Travel Professionals. I'm on there talking every day. I bring on a lot of experts. Like tomorrow we have on Quark Expeditions. He'll be talking about marketing strategies for um, the Arctics and the Antarctics. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram. I'm on my websites. I'm on Facebook. I'd love to connect. And I'd love to have a dialogue with you. I feel like reaching out to agents and actually having a one-on-one -on -one with people is like so powerful. So Steph, back to you. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. I know that was, everybody is probably just like jotting down so many notes, so many good things in there. And I'll take, I'm just going to take presenter role here really quick. Okay, and yeah. then um, sure I will, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, no problem. No, here, I'm going to, um, we'll okay. do, let's see, make sure that I have, nope, not that one. Oh no, hold on. Sorry, now my computer is the one that's like freezing. Yeah, it's so hard on here. Yeah. I know. Okay. Well, I'll ask you the first question while I while I do this here. Um, uh -huh. so this one, you you really already touched on this one, but I know this is just always the most popular question is where do we find luxury travelers? Where's your favorite place to find them? Yeah, really, um, I'm a little bit blessed because my husband actually is an orthopedic medical device guy. And so I actually meet a ton of like higher end people uh, because I'm with a lot of doctors at his dinners and so forth. And so I, I really feel like, like you've got to look in whatever your own circle is. So my, mine's a little more organic because um, I'm with him a lot. And so I've been able to pick that up, but I think in real life, um, it, again, I think it's digital marketing strategies. You know, again, you attract the types of people that you want to socialize with. And I, many of my people have just come off of referrals from other people. So that's awesome. Yeah. We've been talking a lot about referrals in the last um, sessions, all of yeah. these. That's one of the main things. Yeah. Big time on there. Um, so another question is because earlier on you were talking about, you know, the, the pain points for luxury travelers. Larissa had asked, what are the main reasons or pain points for luxury travels travelers? Um, what are the main pain points? Yeah. So what are some of the things that you find that luxury travelers are looking for, basically? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think what luxury travelers are looking for is like unique um, bespoke experiences like they want something that their friends can't get. And that's always what money buys. You know, they want to be able to say, like, I was in Antarctica helicoptering over this and you didn't get to do that. And so and, and I think it goes for any destination. Everybody wants something that that they can brag about. And 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 honestly, I think a lot of people just want a vacation. They want a quiet vacation where they can relax and they can feel comfortable. And so I think a lot of the answers on that are just the basics, you know, that they, they mm -hmm. want privacy, they want solutions, you know, to solving whatever stress they're in, whether it's going to be a wellness vacation or if it's going to be a spa vacation or, or they really want that one-off experience that they can show off to our friends. I mean, we all travel because we want to show it off, you know? <laughs> Yeah, we love it. That's what with Instagram, how you were talking about with the travel. That's why I think because there's it's pictures, it's fun. It's my favorite social media for travel. It's well, and really, Instagram's really grown the travel market so much in a negative and positive way. Um, like I said, I did a whole lecture on that, um, how Instagram's like exploded. Like people didn't go to Peru until you were probably 40, 45. And now every kid's yeah. gone to Peru by 21 and everybody's gone to Santorini. And that wasn't a trip you did until you're 50. And now everybody's gone to Greece. And, you know, we're just, and now they're saying things like dark, dark tourism, such as Chernobyl and, um, yeah. you know, going to, you know, Auschwitz and all these different places that dark tourism has grown because of things on yeah. social media as well. So. Yeah, that is wild. The difference. That was a good point. Yeah, that's really interesting. The difference of 
where people are traveling to. Um, one quick question too, because uh, a lot of people are asking this, is what is the name of your uh, Facebook group? Um, it's Luxury Travel, Social Media, and Marketing for Travel Professionals. Perfect, cool. And I'll probably for everyone, yeah. Yeah, and what I'll probably do too is I'll put that in the article after this um, so that you guys can get that. I'll try to make it easy for you. Put yeah. it in there. Um, okay, so another question here. So when you were talking about the client avatars, so Angela, another Angela, um, asks, where does one go to gather information to, to determine who our ideal client avatar is? Well, you're going to determine that information in your own mind. You're not going to go out and look for that. I mean, who do you want to be selling to? Do you want to be selling to Joni, who's 24, and she's yoga and foodie and authentic and Airbnb-ish? Or do you want to be selling to to Jane, who you know has this income and so forth? So you're creating in your mind who your ideal client is. Okay, so you're not going out there to find the information. You're creating that. Like if you, every single time you guys sell to somebody or you go live on Facebook, you should always imagine that you're talking to one person. So if you could have that ideal dream client who's buying whatever niche that you want to be in because you better niche up in luxury travel because it's hard to be the whole suitcase in that, um, who, what does that client look like? And so jot down that information. Like if you were to like sketch out a person, you know, is it Angela Hughes? Does she have blonde hair? Does she live in Florida? You know, wear this $1 necklace <laughs> from Africa. You know, you're kind of like just building what that profile is. And then, and then you're going to target her all of the time in your mind when you're creating your strategies. So yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. And I know that there's, um, if you go online too, I know there's like free printables where it's kind of getting you thinking yeah. of like, what do they wear? Yeah. What do they do? You know, things like that. And, um, so cool. and that's what I'm saying. A lot of people will say like, oh, it looks like this. Like it's a European traveler and he's river cruising and then they stop, you know, they don't yeah. move it on to like the next thing, you know? And yeah. So. Get down to the details. Yeah, exactly. Nitty gritty. Yeah. And um, another question here. So this one's from Helen. And this is when you were talking about um, websites and just the importance of looking professional. And um, she said, if we are a franchise agency and are obligated to use our host website, what can we do to show we are in the luxury market if they have limited editorial rights? Yeah. So if you have limited editorial rights, and that's an issue with a lot of people, then that's where I would grow your Facebook group. If you have that access grow a group because every single day and be consistent every single day because if you miss a day algorithms change that's where you can get real public with people i do a ton of, i probably two three times a week i go live and uh, you know i'll bring in suppliers to also go live and i'll bring in guest speakers to go in live and sometimes i even do fundraisers in there for you know nonprofit things just to kind of give back a little bit but that's where you can start building your authority right there and um you know, I got a really nice compliment from somebody that travels with me on my humanitarian. And so I'm, I'm two types of people. I'm luxury travel, but then I'm also on the fringes of a lot of garbage dumps working in the summer and for real garbage dumps. And, wow. and on that humanitarian side with me and she said, whoa, your, your social media presence went like one to 10 through COVID, you know? And she's like, all I do is follow you now because like, it's the most, you know, she was like, your Africa trip was like the most exciting thing that we watched. And, you know, and, and it doesn't need to be too much. Like you don't need to post 38 pictures of your trip. Post your best video of giraffes crossing a hundred at a time, or, you know, three or four when you're at a property, don't do 39 photos of everything. Nobody cares about room 225 on the cruise ship, you know, <laughs> um, just like pick, pick a couple highlights that look amazing and, and build upon that. So that's awesome. That's perfect. And kind of on that too. So Beth just asked, what is the best way to grow a Facebook group? Best way is just to invite people, you know, go out and individually send them a message and say, Hey, right now, use your story, like tell your story. I've been telling my story the whole time of how of loss uh, with my business um, and also our humanitarian because we're humanitarian trips as well with our nonprofit. And I run a Broadway training institute with my daughter who's done some work in New York City, who's 16. So we lost like three, three entrepreneurial things, you know, the agency, the nonprofit and the Broadway all in one day. You know, I've been telling that story of loss with people. And so when they see me back down on my first trip in Mexico in August, you know, I was like, hey, this is a new day. And, and you need to become a storyteller. That's so important again. So 
on your personal pages, be, be telling your story, you know, get personal with people, you know, tell me getting 10 pounds and ate 29 chocolate chip cookies a day. <laughs> I, I, I did, <laughs> you know, and, and then they feel like a little more connection with you and then, and then invite them. Like if you add people be like, Hey, jump over to my group. Um, Cause it was easier and I'm not going to lie, like three, four years ago, you could add anybody to the group and then they had to delete themselves if they didn't want to be in it. Now you have oh, to yeah. add, and you, have to, you have to invite and they have to add. So it's a little trickier now, but just start. I don't care if you have five followers, invite five followers in. Um, I've seen amazing things. I have a new agent who started in January. What a terrible time to join the industry. And she immediately yeah. just started the group. And she sold several things out of that over the summer. And I'm like so proud of her because she maybe has a hundred people in there. You know, I've got thousands, but she's got hundreds, 100 maybe. And she's made sales out of there. So, you know, doesn't matter one or 10,000 does not matter. Yeah, no, want, that's awesome. The thing on Facebook followers and social media followers, you don't need 30,000 followers. You need mm -hmm. three people that are buying. And so if your followers don't equate into some type of rate, you know, return on investment, then, you know, I, you see people with 50,000 followers, but if they're not making money at the end of the day and selling a trip, who cares? It means nothing more, you know, you need one person that's going to buy. So yeah. Quality over quantity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And I know that, um, we have came on time because I was watching, Again, man, I could just sit here all day and just chat with you. There's so many great things. And and I know that a lot of people, um, a lot, there's so much as everyone's saying, great session, tons of great nuggets that they got out of this. Um, super awesome. And um, before we go though, I do want to have you mentioning, because a lot of people are asking, where do you sign up for Luxury Travel University? And then the name of your host agency. Well, yeah, um, I have to say our, our, okay. So my agency's Trips and Ships Luxury Travel. We're our own host. Um, we've been in the business since probably for over 35 years it was my family's business my parents and so we host we have anywhere between 15 and 20 agents um and we're really selective with the types of people that we take because we're looking for people who um, i one-on-one -on -one mentor people to, to build their luxury travel business and so um and we're part of the travel leaders um consortia as well and so you can find us at Trips and Ships Luxury Travel, um, our new website for luxurytraveluniversity.com. Um, that's where I'm gonna start putting, I, I just built that site a couple of weeks ago because we, we just started growing where I had so many different requests for like one-on-one -on -one coaching. A lot of the coaching came out of my Facebook group and we just do it privately in the last couple of years. And then the group really picked up with COVID. And so um, now I take one-on-one, -on -one appointments um, for a charge for a fee but I'm also over the next couple months going to be running um, a course on like how to build your ICs um, SEO and like Google word search just different things yeah. I mean that you don't see so much in the business you know so those will be like bigger group classes that you can you know focus in on so you know come over to my group I, I feel like the facebook group is a little more powerful than the web page right now um or just connect with me directly i that would be great yeah and and once again too everyone i'll put um her contact information on the article so you'll see that in there but yeah. i did put the website um in the follow-up email so everybody yeah. will get that anyway too but email us at academy at travify.com if you don't see what you're looking for but um but otherwise yeah and i'm sure you'll have a lot of great conversations coming after this and so much stuff to process now for everybody and um but really motivating and exciting and um you know crazy time now but travel's gonna come back and it's going to and it's already here actually because you know you're already traveling there's people traveling so i just want to thank you so much again for taking time and sharing some of your wisdom with us today so we really appreciate it yeah thanks stephanie so much for having me on and i just in closing just want to say like however you're building your business whether you're in mass market or luxury i think you should always consider ways that you can give back um, throughout the world through travel through sustainable travel because um you know, I think that's the most important thing. Everything that you give back eventually comes back around to you. So um, grow your business, grow your revenue, and then plan on giving it back. I think that's most important. Yeah, that's perfect. That, that is very important. And thank you so much again, Angela. And thank you everyone for joining us. And um, for that, that wraps up the sales workshop too. So Angela, it's like we saved the best for last last year. I'm so excited you. to have you. <laughs> 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 no, this was really great. And thanks so much again, everyone. And have a great rest of your day. We'll see ya. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.